Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu once he had a slave and the duty of his, the slave was to go and labor during the day uh, and bring back whatever profit he would have gained for the evening. So once he brought two dirhams and he gave it to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu or some food. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu started eating without asking where have you got this from. And those days people were free to talk to. Today it's difficult to speak to someone. A person owns one business, you have to take 10 appointments to meet him. Halakhi, the business is like a nest of a sparrow. But you have to take so many appointments to meet them. A slave is talking to the master and he says, Oh my master, every day you ask me where I'm getting the money from, where I'm getting the food from. Today you didn't ask. Abu Bakr said, you know what, I have been so hungry. And as soon as you brought the food, I started consuming it. Please do tell me, where did you get this from? So he says, prior to Islam, before I accepted Islam, I was a fortune teller, a kahin. And people owed me money for telling them all the nonsense that I used to tell them. You know, fortune tellers, they'll tell you everything besides their life. Tell him what you will do tomorrow, let me know. Hmm? Why don't you know what, what's going to happen tomorrow? There was one brother, I like to go away from my topic. One person went to a fortune teller and he showed his hand. He says, tell me, mere zindagi mein shadi likhi hai ke nahi? Will I get married or not? So this person looked at him, he looked at his shoes, his clothes, and this guy looks like a poor person. He says, you'll never get married. That's what they do, they look at your appearance. And then if you're a rich guy, then they'll, you know, they'll give you some good information. So they can pull out some from your pockets. He says, Aap ki shadi kabhi nahi hogi. So he slapped him one, he says, Tere baap ke paanch bachche ghar pe hai. <laughs> so he, he said, Who's, whose children are running around in my house then if I'm not married? So these are fortune tellers. Nevertheless, so he says, prior to Islam, I used to practice this. So someone owed me money and they paid me today. So I brought food with that money. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was infuriated, very angry that you did not tell me before I consumed. This is haram that which has gone in my stomach. It so happened, it was eaten by mistake and it is forgiven. But this was Sahaba radiallahu They knew the effects of haram. They knew that if haram goes in my stomach, haram becomes part of my system, then automatically my deeds are not accepted. The nuraniyat will be gone. I will try to go do good deeds and evil thoughts will come to my mind. That is the ill effects of haram. People complain, Mona, we're getting waswasa. Every time you know, I get these bad thoughts running in my mind. I'm trying to get them away, but they is the effects of the food that we are eating. So he drank water and he put his finger in down his throat until he puked all that out. He didn't have to do that. But they knew the effects of haram. Then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said that I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that that part of the body, that flesh of the body which forms with haram consumption is only destined for Jahannam. And today you and I, we will go anywhere. Ramadan is coming now, we will do our shopping, you know. We'll pick up the samosas from wherever we want. We'll pick up our kebabs from wherever we want. The only label we will look is halal. Today halal is used as a business. We need to go deeper into that. 